let's talk psychological safety. <laughs> so, um, I really wanted to spend some time on this topic because I think it's something that we don't talk enough about. I, I'm starting to hear more around um, not only physical well-being but also mental well-being in corporate. Um, I am hearing an acknowledgement of the mental health crisis that we have, not only in New Zealand, um, but also in the, you know, the rest of the world. Um, I think we all acknowledge how much pressure has been applied to business over the past couple of years. So I think there's some good conversations happening around mental health. Um, I want to really ensure that that's not lip service. And I want to take it one step further. And I want to talk about psychological safety today because it's very related to decision making, um, enhanced communication in our organizations um, and it's really really important that we cultivate that environment so that people ha are able to raise their voice they're able to raise risk you know um, go back to a firefighting example because frankly you'll get it when I talk firefighting and I talk trust and communication and the sense of life and death right like immediate situations so if I'm on the fire ground and I see something that's not right if I don't have my voice to be able to raise that for my team leader, that can put the entirety of our crew in jeopardy. It is absolutely critical that I feel safe enough to be able to raise that, to be able to vocalize. And that might be because something stands out to me that I've seen on the fire ground. It might be to do with the decisions that are being made by a senior person. Um, I have been in situations where people more senior than us are wanting to put us into a um, a physical environment that may be dangerous for the crew. Um, firefighters are taught to work in the black. You want to put us through that nasty bit of green stuff that's right on the edge of the fire line because it looks a bit gnarly and you want to know that it's out. It's a tough call. Like That's going to have an impact on my team. That's going to have an impact on my crew. We need to make sure that we're not putting ourselves in danger. And so that psychological safety is super, super important to make sure that we don't set up ourselves and our team for a worse occurrence further down the track. Now, granted, within the office, we are not often dealing with life and death in quite the same way. We are not act often working um, in a situation where we might put somebody physically uh, in peril, but absolutely are we working with people's mental health and well-being on a daily basis. Um, the more that I've worked into the, um, the work that I'm doing around building a trauma-informed approach, the more that I just see how much in corporate we perpetuate cycles of chronic stress and fatigue, overactivation, overstimulation of our nervous system, and putting us constantly under threat. And uh, so we've got to counter that, and we have to counter that actively. That's what psychological safety is about. It's about building an environment that is relatively more safe for people to feel that they can raise their voice, they can use their voice, they can challenge. Um, and they know that they're not going to get cut down, lose their jobs, all of those sorts of things, right? That's that's the essence of psychological safety. Um, and as leaders, that we also have this interesting dynamic around the power and hierarchy within organisations. So whilst we might feel comfortable um, to raise our voice to, um, you know, in the environments that we're in. Being able to tune into how comfortable your team is with raising something with you, uh, I think is is that slightly more delicate art. So we can work on ourselves in terms of our voice in a room, um, but working on our team and making sure that our team, um, and not even our team, you know, the, the wider community have that comfortability to raise something with us. They have that that place where they can they can challenge us, um, and more broadly, an environment, a work environment where they feel safe to use their voice, safe to come to work, um, you know, that's a slightly more subtle art. And so I was posed a really, really interesting question um, a couple of weeks back by a dear friend and colleague, um, Kieran, who is part of an awesome company called People Talking. Uh, and he, he posed this question, which I loved, which I think is super, super relevant here around what am I doing or not doing that's contributing to the difficulty around me, to the discomfort around me? What am I doing or not doing that is contributing to the discomfort and the challenge around me? Just a little moment of self-reflection, um, which is massive, right? It's, it, it's that 
that question of how am I showing up? Because our intent might be to create a safe space. But our perspective on what safe is may differ to the perspective of our team and those around us. The way that we're showing up might not convey in the way that we expect those values around safety. And so with the best intentions, we could be creating a space that is not safe um, or that is not not helping to build safety um, in quite the way that we expect. Or it could be building safety for the wrong people or not doing enough for those that are really most vulnerable um, all through our own ignorance. And so I think that question of intent is really important too and I'm, and I'm starting to disconnect intent from quote unquote reality. So what am I doing or not doing in this moment that is actively contributing to the challenges and the discomfort around me is about separating that intent from action. Because sometimes as we go through our normal day to day and we are not fully mindful um, or we, we just don't have that perspective to see ourselves from, from a different angle, we may be inadvertently creating spaces that are not safe. And the last layer that I'll add into this is, um, is around relativity. So there is no such thing as a safe space. <laughs> Let's start there. Um, there are spaces that are relatively more safe and relatively braver than others. And what I mean by that is that safety is not the same for every individual. And so when we are cultivating an environment, we need to be conscious of that. A space that one person perceives as safe may be very, very activating for somebody else. And so it's about working through that. Um, and the only way we can do that is through conversation, through collaboration with our teams and with the people around us, right? It's about active listening. It's about supporting and understanding what people need and co-creating that space. Um, it's about doing the work and self-reflection ourselves, so that we are actively thinking about how we're showing up and actively trying to make sure that we can see that link between intent and how we are showing up for others. But that requires the mirror. That requires the feedback. That requires that reflection from our team. And so... That's my journal question for you today. Go away, spend some time. Um, maybe repeat it regularly, but ask yourself that question. What am I doing or not doing that's actively contributing to the challenge around me? So I hope wherever you are in the world today, you're having an awesome, awesome day. I hope that was super helpful. I'd love to hear a comment from you about um, where you're at with creating uh, safer, braver spaces. Um, and I'd love to hear if you've got any feedback on that reflection question. Um, around where some of these touch points are because I think that's a really great place that we can all learn together. So have an awesome, awesome week and I will see you again real soon.